left. Hola. Hola. <laughs> right, what's up? Can't wait to connect. I mean, I thought I'm trying to also fry. No game. Okay, bear with me. Guys, how are we doing? Mm -hmm. Let's just have a quick look. Is it the PC works? So computer, computer comes on. Computer comes on, yeah. just not the laptop. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm just going to see if it actually reacts. Oh, you're on the display already? Yeah. That's exactly. It doesn't seem to be detected in the slightest. Okay. A bit unorthodox, but I'm going to try a HDMI adapter just in case something's wrong with your port. If that's okay. What was the last time you used a VGA? Um, Violet. Okay, nothing should be wrong with it then. on the second monitor. Yeah. Do you want to duplicate the displays or are you okay having two monitors? Uh, I'm okay with having two. Yeah? yeah? Fantastic. I'll leave this with you. Are you done um, 45 minutes? Is it all? Yeah, probably a little bit shorter. A little bit shorter? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm right to ask you to bring it back? Yeah, no problem. Fantastic. I'll leave you to it then. Okay, thank you. No worries. Can anybody hear me? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to help them help you uh, or help you help your client to get uh, their sites a bit up on uh, the Google research uh, page. My name is Dick Densma. Uh, my uh, social media handle is uh, Dutch Yoda. Everybody makes a website here, I guess, or has somebody do it for them. Um, but how do you get number one on Google? Well, that's not easy. Uh, it's probably impossible if you want to compete with the bigger companies, but it's, you know, there are still stuff you can do. But there are some myths, uh, which I will talk about. Uh, there are some technical solutions that you can provide uh, to your client content solutions that your client has to consider while using, uh, uh, while in, uh, applying uh, search engine optimization and some helpful tools that I think will help you or the client. This was the first thing I heard about search engine optimization when I started doing research about it. All the backenders at the company were saying, well, search engine optimization is overrated. 
nobody uses it anymore. And some even said it is dead. Well, if it's dead, then why is Google still changing the ranking and working on it? So, search engine optimization is very important. Some people say, well, okay, I build a site. Search engine optimization is content, right? So it's the client's responsibility. So it can be done afterwards. I'm not convinced that it is, because there are some solutions that you can provide during development. And some people say, okay, I did, it's just the other opposite. We, cre we gave them every tool, now we're done. It's a long time setup, everything will go automatically. No. Search engine optimization is a continuous process. So, what can we do for the client? Well, most of you will probably be doing this, but I don't want to uh, talk about it. The sitemap. Just give them a basic structure how your site is laid out. Uh, the, the branching and everybody, everything. So people, uh, so Google and every other search engine knows where the crawler, where to go. Well, the two modules that are useful for that are sitemap and XML sitemap, but I recently found out that XML sitemap hasn't been out of alpha since 2016, so probably somebody should finish it. Please let not be me. And then you have your clean URLs. With clean URLs, it's just uh, not using the query parameters. So not the question and then the node ID is just slash node slash and then the node ID. That is in core. You should just turn it on. But with path auto, you can use the title, you can use uh, some prefixes uh, such as uh, the content type, what are we looking at. So apply that. Set if, if you're creating a content type, just use the path out module and make a standard alias for it. So it knows well okay, you made this, so now I'm doing slash article slash article title. Which is pretty easy and well, it takes you like five minutes, and the client has done, doesn't have to look at it anymore, unless they want to change it. Very big part is for, for page handling, especially when you are migrating pages. If you're switching from one system to another or upgrading, sometimes the page does not exist. Make sure you have your redirects on, but also make sure you have a nice page. Uh, you have the search for a four module that just applies an on-site search and the words in the URL that were used are used as search parameters. So if a page still exists but it has a totally different URL and you forgot to, do, to implement the redirect, then it will probably pop up there and the client will still find it. Uh, broken external links you may reference to other sites. But if you don't have uh, updated a long time, sometimes that link doesn't work because their page changed or the you whole know, domain is removed. So on a regular basis, check if the links are still working. There is a handy uh, URL that you can use that just walks through your site and checks things, or you can just uh, say, well, go to this URL and check if every URL on that page is still working. Well, I already mentioned redirects, well, there's a redirect module for that, so if you change something, you can make it automatically change to the new URL. <coughs> I remember there was a bug in it, I think it's fixed, that if you change it back, then you get an infinite loop and something is wrong. But, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is fixed. So we have uh, also duplicate content. If you have a page, well, a story about cupcakes, because I like cupcakes, 
you have a story about cupcakes, and then somewhere another editor is also writing a story about cupcakes, and it's basically the same because he was copying from you. Well, because you're spreading your search results over two pages, you will not get as high on the ranking as you want. So use the MetaTag module just to say, this page is the original, this is a copy. So it knows, well, if you're searching on it, I should use the main one and not the little copy one. Another one you should use is the, uh, that is in the MetaTag module, is the href lan. It's just a language difference. If you have a multilingual site, and you have it on cupcakes, and in Dutch that would be cakejes, and so you have the same page in multiple languages. You're still spreading. So tell them from, for English it's this one, for Dutch it's this one, but they're basically the same page. So if you're searching in Dutch, you will only find the Dutch, but it still ranks higher than it would if you did not. Well, meta tagging. When, when I first started, somebody told me, well, meta tag module is all you ever need. Well, that's not true. I already mentioned a few others. The meta tag module is getting more and more powerful. Some other modules are coming into the meta tag module. Um, and what that does is just basically the meta tags in the, buff, uh, in the, in the head tag telling, well, what's my title, what is my language, who is the author, what's the description, what keywords do that fit, but a whole lot more. <coughs> and, well, they have different sub-modules for everything, so you don't have everything at once. If you want to use something, turn it on and do it. And then, uh, another part is the schema.org, and with that you use the RDF, which is the resource description framework, or the JSON-LD, which is the JSON-linked data, which basically works almost the same. Um, what that does is, in your HTML, you can say, well, this is a book, and then in that div that you say, well, this is a book, and then you go below it, and then you can define, well, this is the cover, this is the ISBN number, this is the author, all that sort of stuff, and then there will be a JavaScript yeah, part added to the, uh, to the page, which just makes a JSON object or an R uh, RDF, it's more like a uh, kind of a little different array, but still it's JavaScript. That Google sees it, and it makes snippets out of it. So if you make a book with, with an image for the cover and an author and maybe some ranking, then you can see, if you do Google results, you can see such rich snippet with the well, title, that's probably the link to your page. You see the image and see a little bit more than just text and a small summary of your page. But also for rich snippets, you can use the open graph, which is the same idea, but just for social media. If I share this on Twitter, this is what Twitter will know about my page. Use this image, use this text, use this summary. So Twitter will make a nice snippet for you when you share it. Same for Facebook and everything else. Very important is the SSL certificate. You want to use uh, everything should be going over HTTPS. How, uh, how many people went to the security talk yesterday? So, it was already mentioned that HTTPS is important also for Google ranking. So, uh, if you have a login, it should ha have HTTPS, otherwise Google will say, oh, no, okay, no. <laughs> Don't go to this page, so you will get a really low, low, low ranking, maybe none at all. Uh, they are working on it. Every page should basically just use an SSL. So it may cost you a little bit to get a certificate, but it shows that you are safe. It gives customers uh, some uh, safe feeling 
that they know, well, if I'm going to enter my credit card or if I'm going to log in here as a user, my data will be used safely, will be transferred safely. Um, authentication is getting more and more important because of some president in the US saying fake news, fake news. So, um, yeah, verify your site with Google or any other search engine. Uh, there used to be a site verification module separate, currently it's a meta tag. So, yeah, meta tag for the room, I guess. Um, uh, I'm lost in my story. Yeah, basically it tells you, well, Google uh, verifies who we are, doesn't say that you're telling the truth, but if you are lying, well, then Google knows, oh, this people is lying, and then still, somehow, you will drop on the rankings if, if some fact checker comes with you along. Speed. The faster your page loads, the higher you get on the ranking. Then you have the Google accelerated mobile pages, that's just for the mobile pages, and Google will come, <laughs> page there. Make a pretty page, don't make an ugly page. And yeah, now the faster it gets, the higher you get on the ranking. And this, that also goes for other pages. But Google is pushing on mobile first because people are always on the page. Even I am using this thing more than I'm using that thing. Except at work, then I'm using that thing more than I use this one. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. <laughs> So, make uh, a good sign, uh, the design, make, make it work on mobile. There are exceptions if you're the only one. Who here loves board games? Well, there's a site that calls Board Game Geek. It's <coughs> really ugly and no mobile support whatsoever. But still, if you're searching on a game, it's the first thing that comes up. Because, yeah, it, it's pr pr probably the only real one. So what can your uh, customer, your client, or if you're just making your own site, what can you do? There is something that calls long tail. The first, about 20-30% of the keywords you will probably get. You will say, okay, I see that, but there are 70% and that it's a long tail that is just going like a slide like that. I wish I could use the image, but the person I asked said no. Well, I cannot show the image. Um, but that basically means that there are keywords that are being used, uh, searched for, but there are not much, much hits for you on that search word. So you can increase that by altering your text, making new articles and such. So, yeah, let the client know that. You know, if I'm talking about a car, well, that's fine, but if somebody is talking about a specific brand, well, if you're not mentioning that brand, you still will not be found. Somebody who does will get hired. Voice search. Well, I'm not keen on voice search because somehow my phone doesn't understand what I'm saying. So, um, but it is getting used a lot and a lot more. And people are not saying, find car. And they're saying, uh, find a red Toyota Corolla. Ugly car, but still. It, it, then it will search for all those words. Make sure that if you are writing or something, that you are realizing that there are some stuff that you people are looking for. I mentioned color. Well, it's maybe too specific, but you can add it somewhere that you even mention, well, we have the red, blue, and white. Well, three colors, you're sure you're going to be found that. Semantics, how do you write? I don't write good. I know that. I just try to do some reviews for board games, video games, and people say, uh, no. It's not your thing. So, okay, I don't write. <laughs> uh, but 
the problem for me is if I'm summarizing, I'm doing it, and then, and then, and then. Yeah. Google is working on, and I don't think they are ready yet, but they are working on looking at your semantics. How is your story building? Is it engaging? If you're just doing and then, and then, and then. Yeah, that, it's not really engaging, it's just summarizing something. You can use the bullet list for that. So, make sure that the people who are creating the pages know what they are writing about. They have a passion for it, probably, otherwise they should not be hired for it. And write a good text and make it long. If you are writing an article, make it a long article. Because a long article takes time to read, and if it takes time to read, then you're long on the page, and Google says, oh, this page is engaging, up, we go up. So clickbaiting will be less and less and less. Because mostly people are using clickbaiting, oh, look at this, okay, we go there. There's no text, it's not, this is not, and then go back. Uh, okay, you got a click. That's fine, but you didn't get the engagement, you didn't that get the time on the page. And Google will look for it. If you have your Google Analytics on, it will pass through to Google and it will be self, uh, used for everything. So, images, use them. Pictures says more, more than a thousand words. Use nice pictures. More and more people are using the image search to find something. But don't forget about the alt. Fill it in. It's just basically good search engine optimization. Not everybody can see, so if you have a text, it's nice for screen readers, but it's also good for. Uh, yeah, blind pe uh, for other people, they hover of it, and then it says, well, instead, image 001 point JPEG. Well, that doesn't tell anything. So it doesn't also tell something to Google. Google says, okay, this is a nice image. Also, use a nice name. Don't use image 001 dot JPEG. Give it a little bit of a description in the title. Don't make it very long. Just a couple of words. Videos, well, YouTube is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Have some videos on your website. If you are well, doing reviews, make, make some nice video reviews instead of a whole text or have a text and a video review. Uh, Google will check if you are using multimedia, all those stuff and will rank you higher for it. Also, share. Make it possible for others to share, but also, if you are done, share your content. If you have a channel, post it on there. The more you get clicked and people get on your page, the higher your ranking gets. As somebody once said to me, if everybody loves you, Google will love you. So those are the uh, solutions that are there. What can we use for tools? Well, there is a module called uh, Search Engine Optimization Checklist, which just basically gives you a complete list for, uh, maybe you can do this, maybe you can do this. First check is install checklist. Makes a little bit, <laughs> not much sense to put it on there, because otherwise you could not see it, but it's still there. Uh, it, it helps you uh, get more secure, it helps you, well, not get you more secure, but make you think about it. Uh, let's see if I can, do I have it open anywhere? No, not yet. I did have the demo for this one to show you. Not Oh, 
No, that's not what I wanted. Ooh, yeah, I know. I didn't uh, do some restrictions. Uh, okay. So, yeah. The module promotes this book, uh, Drupal 8 at SEO. I have not read it because it's, I ordered it to <laughs> include into this, this uh, presentation, but it hasn't arrived yet. So it uh, gives a lot of text, and then, well, if this install enable, say, check this module. Well, okay. But also some other modules to think about. I haven't tried them all, but, well, okay, try this one, but it, it, it basically helps you get through everything. Yeah. Enable clean URLs, enable the redirect, and enable path auto, I already mentioned those. Enable meta tag, yeah. enable the alternate uh, language module. For search engines, enable sitemap. Set up Chrome to refresh your site. Also very important. So if you want to use a verify by Bing, then yeah, create a Microsoft account. Sorry, you're hate, the hating Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> it's still something you can do. Analytics. Enable Google Analytics. Make sure you have Google Analytics. Optimizing your content, and that's uh, well, I. That's not turned on. Don't lie. Because the thing doesn't is not compatible with Drupal 8.4. I think the last time I used it was in 8.2. And I tried it to do a demo here about it, but it didn't work. Uh, so yeah, that should be like it said, use the dev version of the beta 2. You know, that's what where I went wrong. I used the beta 2 version. So it's just making sure that if you are forgetting something, it's there. Don't put this thing all the way to the production page, but use it during your development. Another one that is also on my presentation, but also here. So let's install and enable the Yoast uh, search engine optimization module. It's currently called something different. Uh, Each of you first. Uh, no. uh, the real time search engine optimization for Drupal. What that does is if you are creating a page, it will look for how dense is your keyword usage. Do you use it in app? Is your text good? Is your image good? By the way, if you are using images, please do not use them in the WYSIWYG editor. Images get better results if they are shown separately. What we do most of the time, until it, unless the client really pushes for it, is just use a paragraph module and just say, okay, paragraph text, paragraph image, paragraph video for all the different content types. And then we can show them differently because it is better for Google. So that's a little bit an overview on how you can make your uh, website better for Google to find or Bing or whatever you are using. Are there any questions? No? Um, I was just wondering about um, uh, canonical so I've never quite understood them, but I wanted that they're important. I just see that yeah, that's uh, the duplicate content is the canonical link. Okay. Basically saying, well, this page is original, this page. It could be on a completely different domain. So if you're copying somebody else's content, it's it, quite nice to say it's a canonical to that person. So he gets the ranking, okay, but it's fair to do so. Or if you are writing a blog and you're writing your own blog and it's used on your company's page as well, and you can refer to yourself or the other way around, which whichever you prefer. Yeah. Yes? Um, how important is using um, 
some point it's just okay it makes an end stop there and go next there and then it yeah it makes sense to apply those meta tags because it's a full story but if they are not related I probably would not use it it's confusing yes you mentioned 404 errors yeah have you ever used um, the web server like Apache or NG NGX to catch a 404 error um, <coughs> no, since I used Drupal, I all, almost every time I used Drupal. There were some projects, but I, I didn't apply it, my colleagues did, did. And sometimes, yeah, it, it's faster, because it's oop, and Drupal does nothing. But it doesn't give any information except this page isn't there. And if you use, for example, the search 404, it, well, it says, page isn't there, but maybe you were looking for this, which is nicer. Any more questions? Sorry, I've got yeah. another one. Um, on uh, using AMP, um, is, it, is it particularly worthwhile? Because I see it, I mean, Google pushes it a lot, but I wasn't sure how much work was involved in setting it up against how, what benefit it's going to give me. I personally haven't used it yet. I know it, it, it's being pushed and uh, I understand that it will benefit and the exactly the, how much it will benefit, I don't know. I don't know the number, sorry. Thank you. In the same slide, um, you had mobile first. Yeah. What's your definition of mobile first? Well, I prefer same, uh, same page, same content, but shown differently. Maybe excluding something. Uh, for example, if you have a big slider at the uh, top, yeah, you're going to have a, a, a fold, which well, people are, you can use the scrolling, but I, I don't like it personally. So I, I remove it. So I just show, well, menu bar, logo for the website title. And then big thing is missing, but all is in the same theme. Just use media queries to adjust. You can also use a second domain if you want, which is not my preferred way to do it. But then you can separate your content between domains. You say, well, this page isn't available at all for mobile. Okay. What's your experience on, um, uh, on multi domain websites? Is there a difference between trying to SEO optimize two separate domains? So, two domains hosted from the same group um, with duplicate, with sharing content. Yeah, the, the, you, you get in the, the canonical issues, and we have found it really hard uh, for one project to really uh, apply this perfectly because they wanted English on every single domain. And they refused to enter the canonical because they said, well, I'm not referring to the other company, mm -hmm. even though they're all sister companies. They say, we, we're not going to use it. No. We explain, it's not good for you. And most of the time we just say, well, what is the main domain? What is, what is the domain you are focusing on? For example, this site has a complete uh, yeah, a .eu account for all European. It's, it's only English. So we said, well, that should be the main. Everything goes through there, and if they want to see it in another language, they can go to the other ones. But yeah, sometimes they, leave, and they just turn off English. But uh, they forget, well, 
we are an Italian translated variable uh, a page from the European version which can really be working both sides if you are referring on the European version to the Italian then both rankings will go up but somehow this point is a little bit stubborn <laughs> any more questions? yes discussions and you're sharing on social media. The canonical is, well, in, in Drupal you already have a canonical if you're using uh, aliases because node slash node ID is in fact a canonical for all the other stuff. You just don't want them to use that because it's ugly and it's not uh, SEO friendly. So that's uh, one, uh, one big difference. Also, uh, uh, you can refer to other sites with canonical saying well this is basically the original so that, that's how you can use the canonical tag and that's the biggest difference any more questions okay thank you very much Recording will be. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all best recorded and play on YouTube at some point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your company is called Yoda. Dutch Yoda. Yeah. Dutch Yoda. Dutch Yoda. Dutch Yoda. Dutch Yoda. Yeah, Yoda was taken <laughs> when I just tried to use it. So I'm saying, okay, I'm Dutch. Dutch Yoda. <laughs>